How you doing? My name is Donario McCants, and this is my draft day experience. All right, set up. So coming off of a pretty good senior se senior season, um, out of Delaware State, historically black college, small university um, in Delaware, out of all places, and um, you know they said, hey. You know, I think I had a pretty good season, like I said, you can see from the plaques and everything. Um, all MEAC, all conference, NCAA and all that stuff, especially coming from a, you know, subdivision uh, of the NCAA. Uh, ended up with 19 touchdowns for the season. Um, and basically my day, I was in the house because everybody was like, yo, you're probably gonna be a free agent. You'll probably be a free agent. So I had a couple of teams that was on me pretty heavy um, the Jets was one of them, and the Steelers was one of them. Um, Cleveland had paid me a visit, Indianapolis had paid me a visit. Um, but those were the teams, like I said, especially the Jets. I think they saw me as, you know, another possible Keyshawn Johnson. A lot of people used to call me Baby Keyshawn or Lil Keyshawn. Um, mainly because of my body type. I don't think it was necessarily my style of play. Um, but definitely because I fit the mold. I have perfect same size, same attributes as Keyshawn Johnson. So that was that story. But for the most part, everybody was like free agent, free agent, free agent. Um, now, to build up to this, nobody, you know, kind of knew who I was. Um, so, you know, started off with one or two. I think Cleveland, Indianapolis came through, Delaware State did a couple trials. Now, in my situation, I didn't go to the combine. So they had to come to me. And from what I hear now, some things were done uh, on the borderline. I was doing a, a workout almost every other day for about two or three weeks. So coaches would come in, hey, I need you to meet me here. Hey, I need you to meet me here. And then I just go out there and work out. Um, and then those combine days, you know, my bench press went from nine to 14. My, my, uh, my 40 went from uh, I think like a 4.5 to a 4.3. So me working out every day <laughs> was actually making me better. Um, now it was a little trick in it. Um, New England had came down and they had me run on a rubber, brand new rubber track. That always they just got a new track and I had a rubber shoes and they wouldn't let me put on um, spikes. I was like, let me get some spikes. And they was like, no, don't worry about the spikes. We just want to see you run. And I ran it like a 4.6. And I'm like, yo, it's a brand new track on rubber shoes, and I think it was new shoes as well. So I ran a 4.6, and people started calling me, hey, man, what are you doing? See, I didn't know what and understand the process. Nobody tells us the process. I had nobody in my corner to be like, all right, this is what you do. And a lot of times, especially the smaller schools, uh, for some reason, they put more pressure on us to do things a certain way. Because for sure, when I went to other schools, they had half their clothes off in spikes running full speed, full speed. Not saying they wouldn't have ran the times differently, but for the most part, it looked different from my perspective. But anyway, so I get the call like, man, look, you can't do that no more. You can't have your numbers hit the waiver wire like that. Then people going, you know, you're going to change on the board. Now that being said, also, when I did run my 40 at Delaware State, Coach Mann, shout out to Coach Mann, Richard Mann. Um, he's part of Marty Schottenheimer gang. Um, my stepdad had videotaped it. So when I ran my first 40, you just see him walk. Later on, he tells me all he had to do was see that first 20. And he walked and said, hey, we gotta get this guy. So, day of, first day. Don't expect to go first day, don't expect to go first day. Um, you'll probably be a free agent. So I'm sitting in the house, I didn't go anywhere. I'm chilling in the basement, most likely playing video games, watching basketball probably. Second day come around, all right, watching the teams. And now for me, mind you, I'm watching all the guys go first, first and second day. Now the part that really pissed me off was the guys who didn't play, but the fact that they went to the bigger schools, got an opportunity before somebody who proved that they could play on the field, you know, and dominate on the field. So that was that chip on the shoulder. Coming from HBCU didn't really matter. I was just happy to get an opportunity. You know, because that's where I was told that's you can all, all, all you can ask for. Um, so, following that, so I'm just calculating all these numbers. I'm writing these names down when they got drafted, because now that was it was a challenge. That was that was the fight. 
for me on the inside. You know, you always hear athletes make up stuff in their head. That was me. All these suckers that got picked before me and you ain't even touch a field, you can't be better than me. So that was kind of a mindset. But then that, that fourth round came around, you know, and then I got some calls. Hey, hey, stay by the phone. If you don't get picked up, if you don't get drafted, we're going to pick a free agent. All right, boom. Then that fifth round came through. And they said, hey, stay by the phone. You're our next pick. So I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get your number so if y'all don't call me, I can call you back. And they was like, stay by the phone. You our next pick. So then the next time it go across the screen, uh, the, the, the Washington Redskins picked Darnarian McCants. Uh, we'll be right back after this commercial. So all they showed was my ticker of my name going across, and they went straight to commercial. Then I got a phone call, uh, Darnarian McCants. Congratulations, you are now a Washington Redskin. And that was Coach Schottenheim congratulating me on being drafted fifth round to the Washington Redskins at the time now, the Washington football team. But that's pretty much my draft day. Um, and then, you know, everybody was like, what was, my, what was my reaction? It was go time. My reaction was, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, my family, like I said, my family was upstairs. They didn't get the call because I had the phone next to me. And I just let them know, yeah, I'm like, I got to get ready to go down to, um, to D.C. But I didn't know they was in Virginia. So then when I come down to Virginia, get lost down here because Loudoun County wasn't built up yet. And uh, I guess the rest is history, if you want to call it like that. But that's pretty much my my draft day story um you know coming from a smaller school you know i was definitely happy um to get that opportunity because all you see you know i think at that time when i was coming up you might have seen some fo black college football team uh football games on bt but now they've completely disappeared um you know why you know there's some questions we gotta ask um how do we get back that visibility um so people know that we exist but you know, that was my whole deal, is to go out and represent and let them know HBCUs got ballers too. That's why anytime you see my pictures, we had something called DSU, that this was the D, that was the S, and that was the U. So I just did it often. So anybody from Delaware State, you know, around that era who was doing that, they already knew I was representing HBCUs. And anytime, you know, you know, when you go across the field, a lot of times those guys know each other because they either competed against each other or went to the same schools. It was very rare that I ran across somebody who was from HBCU. And I just tried to say what's up, you know, good game, whatever. But then I think, like I said, we start having some monsters come out and show them that, you know, HBCU still have some ballers. Um, Sean Mathis, uh, what's that boy, Thea. You know, we had some guys who ended up being All-American, I mean, All-Pro, uh, as well as win a couple Super Bowls. So, you know, it's just about the opportunity. If we get the opportunity, we shine. And that's all it come down to, you know? so. This is my draft day story, Delaware State, Donnery McCants. Thank you very much for listening.